Hi, I'm Peggy Farron. Welcome to the Understand Photography Show, where we talk about travel, nature, and fine art photography. Hey, flower photographers, you are really going to want to stay tuned because Jackie Kramer is back. Jackie Kramer is Oh my gosh, she's like the best flower photographer. She's amazing. But we're going to talk about how to improve your photography, your flower photography specifically, uh, by competing. So stay tuned for that. Now, the Understand Photography Show is a podcast. You can find us on iTunes or Spotify, however you listen to, to podcasts. But we also put the behind the scenes on YouTube and on um, Facebook. So we have a Facebook watch party on, on Fridays at 4 p.m. If you want to, 4 p.m. Eastern time, if you, time if you want to join us, that's on the Understand Photography Facebook page. So while you're there, make sure that you check out the groups too. We have two groups. One is a general group, the Understand Photography group, where you can post pictures and share, ask questions about photography, technical things, um, what kind of stuff you want to buy, whatever. And then our other group is selling your photography as art. So you flower photographers especially, man, that flower photograph photographs sell. So if you, it's all about you becoming the right marketing person. So join that group. We have a lot of support. We talk about different ways to sell your artwork. Now our signature class is the Four Weeks to Proficiency in Photography. It is an online class, but it's an interactive online class, so it's a little bit different than the other ones you'll see. It's a foundational class. So if you're a beginner or if you're an intermediate photographer and you have gaping holes in your education, which most photographers do at this point, this four-week class is going to give you a really strong foundation. And, and let me tell you something. If you want your creativity to soar as a photographer, you've got to have the technical stuff down. You have to know the composition rules. Then you can break the rules. Then you don't think about which setting should I have. You just think of the end result and you know how to get to it. So check our, out the four weeks to proficiency in photography. Uh, just check out our website at understandphotography.com and you'll see the different start dates. So Jackie Kramer is a repeat guest. She was uh, here on the Understand Photography show on episode 132, and we talked about creative fine art floral photography. Now Jackie has become very well known as a fl flower photographer. She's really good, and she's a really, really good instructor. She holds workshops. She um, not just workshops, but she gets joint are they joint workshops? Is that what you would call them? Or almost like mini yes, conferences? Yes, it's like a mini conference, right, yeah. right, where we have multiple instructors. Mm -hmm. So uh, obviously she's already here. Uh, Welcome, Jackie. <laughs> hi, thank you, Peggy. It's so good to be back. And, and now we are here at the Florida Camera Club Council Conference, where you were one of the speakers. And we're airing this a couple of months later. But if anybody is interested, in, it's called we call it the F. 3C. So F3C.org is the Florida Camera Club Council's website. They put on a, an amazing conference every March in Fort Myers, Florida. So um, I know that that's a long time from now, but if you live anywhere in Florida, come on, just drive over. It is really a good conference. So Jackie's one of the speakers at this conference. Sorry, I keep doing commercials. <laughs> uh, it was great. It was very well put together. And from the moment the keynote started, I started learning things. And also, I was very appreciative for some of the things that he shared that were both inspirational and reminders to everybody about how important it is to invest in the learning part, just like they do in gear. So I thought it was great. And then he showed a bunch of um, images. This was Joe Edelman. Did I pronounce his name correctly? Joe, he was, he was fabulous. It was very high energy and lots of portraits, which I don't do too many of, but it sure is nice to see because some of the same techniques apply. So right. yeah, so we, we had some field sessions and a lot of classroom sessions, a lot of networking, trade show, and here we are. Yay. <laughs> All right, so, so now we're, we're gonna, Flower photography is, is such a hot topic. People are really into flower photography right now, but we want to make the show a little bit unique. And you have a unique, I, I don't know how unique it is, but I think that honing down to talk about competing as a flower photographer. Do you say flower photographer or floral? Photographer? I call it florographer. 
course. With the PH. <laughs> ah, that's your, now you have a Facebook group like I do, that, right? I do. I have a Facebook group. We now have over 6,500 people from around the world at all levels who shoot flower photography. Okay. Yeah. And, and if they want to find that, go ahead and... It is Florography with a P-H, P-H-L-O-R-O-G-R-A-P-H-Y. Florography hyphen artistic floral photography. And that's on Facebook. You just submit a request and we'll take a look at you and make sure that you are a legitimate photographer. And then you're welcome to come in and share your images. We run themes every week. Awesome, awesome. All right, so let's talk about how to improve your flower photography. Okay, well we talked about a number of different ways and of course we all know that you can take workshops, you can practice, you can go out with friends. Uh, we, one of the most interesting ways I think and novel ways which we don't think about often is to compete, enter competitions. And I have to say that there was a time and it wasn't that long ago where I thought entering competitions wasn't necessarily a good idea because I always try to tell people to be their most authentic self and shoot what pleases you, not what pleases the judge. However, I've, I've given this a lot of thought. I've organized photo competitions. I've, organized, I've, I've entered them and I've judged them. And I, I have a new take on the whole thing now. I think it's very important to do. And I'll give you some reasons why. Okay. One of them is in the lead up to the to the entry to the submission. Okay. So I think it's important to when you've made the decision to go ahead and, and enter your work, first of all, it's it's a very brave decision to make. And you know, it's a little bit intimidating you're putting your work out there to be critiqued. And in florography, I disallow critique. I like to ask people to share positive positive feedback with one another um, but when you take that step and you put your work out there for others to review critically it's it's a little bit intimidating no it's not it's a lot intimidating yes <laughs> <laughs> it, it is it is and, and that's true regardless of the genre whether you're doing people weddings flowers landscapes animals, wildlife, it is. So I think one of the first things that's important to do is decide what competition you want to place yourself in. So, uh, you know, there's, there's competitions that are held at camera club levels, and then there's competitions such as the International Photographic Competition through the Professional Photographers of America. There are specific competitions to flowers and garden photography, such as the International Garden Photographer of the Year. And that's based out of Kew in the UK, Kew Gardens. Um, and, and now it's, it's, I think, owned by a company, uh, I, I can't remember the name off the top of my head, World Garden International or something like that. So that is very specific to this genre. Okay. And when you make those decisions, well, then there's, of course, there's NAMPA, the North American Nature Photographers Association. You look at the, the criteria for entry. Okay, and what do you mean by that? And so, so let's talk about that a little bit. Some of them, such as, uh, I can't remember off the top of my head, some of them don't allow you to, I think nature's best, for example, they do not allow you to enhance or alter the photograph through Photoshop manipulation or any kind of creative post-processing. Okay, so you okay? have to shoot it how you see You have it. to shoot it well, and you might be able to do some dust cleanup or enhance the uh, let's say the saturation or the vibrance or maybe reduce the the noise a smidge but that's about it and how do so, they how do they tell that's a good question do you just enter the raw file as well uh, yes you do you do ah. if you're selected uh, and and most of the competitions call it shortlisted if you're in that shortlist where you're kind of narrowed down to the semi-finalists you will have to enter the raw image okay. and you you have to enter at least a high resolution image for the others but for competitions like that where they want to determine whether or not you've done something in post-processing you have to enter the raw image okay. so yeah so you can't trick the judges <laughs> <laughs> but you know it's hard for judges to tell nowadays because a lot of processing can occur in camera 
There are some cameras where you can alter the settings, and you know I shoot at, at a, a neutral or standard s setting, and um, and that 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 affects the, the the JPEG that I see on my LCD. However, there are some cameras that can alter it in the camera. You might have a setting on your camera, for example, where you can do HDR, yes. and it can be in different HDR modes. It can look very artistic and not like a traditional photograph. Oh yeah, you can, uh, those Sonys, a lot of the Sonys, I mean you can, you can make it look like, like it's not even like a photograph. Exactly. Like you sat there on Photoshop for three hours. <laughs> so, so the truth is you, you really are so doing this count? in camera. It's a good question. I honestly don't know. Well, I'm, I'm curious. I'm curious too, but it probably does say in the rules. It, 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 there are also some things like filters that you can use um, outside on your on your lens, for example, Lens Baby has a wonderful kit now called the Omni Filter Kit, which I love, and those are a variety of uh, crystal wands and color gels that you can move in and in and around your image. That's done in camera. It's not in post processing. So yeah, where that's a funny line, isn't it? It, it is a lot but the, of. The, but to get back to it, the whole point was to read the. Know what you're entering. Yeah. Yes, and that and that helps you as you're shooting because if you're if this, this if this is what you want to achieve, it's going to um, basically behoove you to pay a lot of attention now to your shooting practices and to improve it, and it helps improve your your techniques in the field. Now, if you're going to enter another competition, the let's say International Garden Photographer of the Year, they allow you to do. Uh, whatever you want mm -hmm. and but they are going to ask for a high-res image not to determine what you've done to it but because they will eventually need that yeah. um, but there's different categories so in a competition like that you may have a category that calls for macro you may have another one that calls for uh, let's say greening of the garden or greening of the earth so now you're looking for uh, green roofs or photographic opportunities that show the um, some societal attempt to be green, okay. to be sustainable, uh -huh. okay? And then there's gardens, specific gardens, like Sissinghurst, for example. It's a castle in, in England. They have their own subset. So there's a variety of subsets. You might have the, the square crop in Igpati, and you might have a black and white competition. Okay. And so this is important because now, how many of us shoot thinking black and white? So it kind of forces you when you're prepping for a competition like that to go back through your images and look at them through a different lens, so to speak. Oh. So now you're gonna try and convert to black and white and you start to play with those, the nuances of a black and white image. Square crop, same thing. Many of us avoid cropping with a one-to-one -one ratio. Uh -huh. But if you're gonna enter a competition, now you're gonna look at your images somewhat differently. So you may or may not shoot them differently, but when you're looking at them that way, you may keep as opposed to discarding okay. some images. Okay. And then you're gonna edit them differently, perhaps. Compose them differently. And in, in the cropping post-process, in, in post back at, at your computer. Okay. So I think it helps make you a better photographer because now you, you know, it's so easy to get stuck in a rut and always shoot the same aspect ratio, the same Right. You know, for the same end product. Oh, yeah. So now when you do this, you've got these rules superimposed over you. So that's one, one thing I think that, that really it's helps. It's funny because this has nothing to do with flower photography, but here at the convention, you know, um, Isaac Hadid and, his, and Rocky, they come they, from Southern Photo Technical Service. They're here cleaning sensors, and they come to Naples. They live in Miami. Their, their shop is in Miami. They come to Naples three or four times a year at my studio and they clean sensors. And so I went up to them to just take a cell phone picture and Isaac said, we need to do something different. You take the same picture every time. Oh! <laughs> and I thought, he's right. And I, oh. I was stuck. I mean, I don't even think of it as being a creative picture. I'm just like promoting that he's here. Right, you know? right. But he was right. You know, you need to be jolted out of your rut. Yes, And that yes. jolted me because I was very insulted, but he was exactly right. Well, this is exactly what happens when you enter a competition. You yeah, hurt kind of feelings. at first, it's like, Really, you know, I, I thought this was really good, and it's not that it wasn't really good, but now it's They've time to do something it, new. And it could be that it was new to you, but the judges have seen that same shot a million right? times, and so it's not, 
going to win anymore. Maybe it won the first time 15 years ago, you know. And you, you used to do weddings, right? A long I, time yes. ago? Uh -huh. Well, not too long ago. We even? went digital and everybody was doing the selective color and we thought we were so cool and it was just the coolest thing. If, oh. you, ever, if you ever did that now, people are like, how old are you? <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of outdated. <laughs> Mini skirts and go-go boots. Yes. yes. <laughs> but I mean, it's the yes. same thing. It's the, the same judges, thing. Especially if you're if you're if you're co competing in a in a higher level competition you're going to have judges who have been judging for a long time and have seen a lot of stuff seen a lot of flowers and then sometimes the judges rotate out and it's just like with any art or you know visual art art you have your it's subject to what they like and their taste so you just never know and that's also you know it's it's that's the reality of it is they just may have, uh, they, they, might, they might have something else that resonates with them. Perhaps they like bold colors. Maybe they like everything sharp. And that's a really important consideration for floral photographers because many of us like to shoot on the soft side. We do a lot of selective focus. We're doing a lot of textures, many of us. Um, and a lot of the lenses, the new optics through Lens Baby and some of the vintage lenses do shoot quite soft and they give you very funky effects that you know they do shake up the norm and they do you know in introduce you to something that's fresh and that's fun and a judge may not be ready for that but then you might have another judge that embraces it and that's excited about it so you just never know and that leads me to another point which is you still have to do what you do no matter what you submit it has to resonate with you you, I don't shoot for a judge. I want to give them my best work, and my best work is really defined by myself. Okay. I'm the maker and purveyor of my own work, and that's true for everybody. So, but do you do you go into a competition with the idea that I would improve my photography, or do you go in like I want to win? I want to do the best. I want to send, submit the best entry. Okay. And, and so that if I walk away, I'm like, I always feel like it's a bonus. If I've won, I, okay. I feel very fortunate and very grateful. It's a, it's a bonus for me. But I feel like when I walk away from the preparation for it, you know, you, still, you might, you know, you go from determining which competition you're going to enter to selecting the images and maybe even shooting for that competition, then to preparing your images. So maybe you're, you're doing the final touch, cleaning off some specs, recropping, maybe, you know, maybe you're doing post-processing of archived images for that competition, and then maybe you're even shooting new. So leading all the way up to that gives you sort of a new body of finished work. But and how is that gonna make my work different? Well, now you've walked away with the black and white. So, for example, if you haven't done any black and white, now I've got a body of black and white images. Okay. I, maybe I, if I do cards, I've got a whole new set of cards. Okay. If I'm making canvases or prints, now I do that. If I teach photography, now I've got a new technique and a new twist that I can teach to my clients. Okay. All right. So, you know that you're going to, you decide that you're going to, go for this competition, or maybe two, two different competitions, and you're gonna start shooting fresh for this competition. Now, you know you wanna do something different. First of all, how do you study, how do you decide on which competition? Do you look at the, the like old pictures that won, or do you use that as a guideline for the, the direction you should take? Because if the whole key, if the whole reason you're doing this is to improve your flower photography not just improve it but maybe make it a little more unique then should you be looking at what won last year yes and, absolutely okay. absolutely I think that's a very good point it's helpful to look at the galleries of winners and going back several years and you can see sort of the the differences between one year and another as judges change and um, if you go to 
any of these competitions, Nampa has different categories. They have a conservation category, for example. And so images in that category need to tell a story mm -hmm. and, and send a message of conservation. So that's, that's something that I think perhaps some of us think about, but we don't really know how to translate into photography. Okay. And so I, I thought a lot that, about a lot, I thought about that a lot in the entry I did for Nampa, let's see, was it the year before last? And I did something on the red tide, which is not floral photography, but it was a composite of dead marine life in the Sarasota area after the red tide. It meant a lot to me. It was a very personal image, and it was fortunate that I was recognized as, as one of the uh, winners in that, in that competition because it, it allowed me to tell a story. It was, it was repeated on a blog, and then, um, of course, in the Nampa Expressions, but okay, so what I, what I am just trying to, well, well, I hear what you're saying, but I'm trying to make it like more general for the audience. You basically went out of your, out of your entire category of flowers because you looked at all the different categories that there were and you're like, I have an idea for that category. I'm going to stretch a little bit and do something different. Well, actually, I, not in that case. I did, I was in Sarasota. It's where I grew up and I was just beside myself and I had a camera in my hand and so I was shooting images and I really didn't I didn't have any idea what I was going to do with them they were almost a chronicle to me and I put a little Facebook gallery together and it was it was it was a progression of images that were shot both with my cell phone and my real camera and it was a variety of empty restaurants and dead marine life it yeah, was yeah. you know There's it was a story right there. it was there. a lot it was of killing us it was the restaurants were empty on St. Armand's. You could park anywhere, and a, a storm came in. After months and months and months of no business, the storm washed the the horrible odor away, and somehow the news media got word out uh, that everything was fine. And literally between Friday night and Saturday, night, everybody was back on St. Armand's. They were eating ice cream yeah. and they were in galleries <laughs> looking at sculptures of dolphins and it was it was a stark contrast to me as to um, what was going on in the real life where there was no living marine life out there and I, I put my images together in a gallery but when I saw this competition with Nampa it made me rethink this in an artistic way so it was it was how can I tell this story with a single image mm. and so then I went back through my images of the dead marine life and I recomposed, I composited them, and through that, through a single image, I, I was able to tell the story. Okay. okay. So, yes, yeah, so it, it, it didn't, it didn't trigger me to shoot something new, but it triggered me to take what I had and do something with it. Okay. And look at it a little bit differently. Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. I see. So, all right, so we're going to research the competitions, and we're going to look at the categories that we can compete in, in the competitions. Uh-huh. And maybe think outside of what we're comfortable in. You know, I mean, we all, like I do, I take morning walks and take pictures with my cell phone, not every day, but sometimes I see pictures that I, you know, maybe I could, maybe they would have a cell phone competition and I would say, oh, I, I've got cell phone pictures, you know, there I don't know. There you go, <laughs> absolutely, <laughs> yes, like that. yes. It could just, yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's good. So what, what, what if I wanna win? Well, be persistent. I think that's one of the most important things. And I, I also think that it's helpful to start local. There's so many camera clubs that are offering competitions um, more frequently than once a year. So many of them have quarterly competitions. And I think that also some of them do levels, like level, you know, yeah, beginner, beginner intermediate. intermediate, advanced, or, you know, maybe right. there's two levels or three levels. So I think that's a really good place to warm yourself up to the concept of entering and being critiqued and getting a score or... Well, you know. I'll tell you, the, the camera clubs, and it depends on your club, but some of them, they will critique. Some of them you just win or lose, some competitions. So I, at least I'm thinking this as we're talking, if I'm going to... If the, if the main purpose of me entering something in competition is to become better, I, wanna, I want to 
go somewhere where I'm going to get feedback, right? So a lot of these will give you feedback. Some of them you have to pay for the, the critique. Oh, mm -hmm. interesting. So I know with Igpati, the international garden photographer, you have to buy the critiques. And they will, cost? I don't know, but I, I can find out. It's not cheap. It does add up. Um, okay. And you have to pay for each critique for each entry okay. separately. So that's, that's quite interesting. And I, I don't recall off the top of my head whether they all do that, but it was very helpful. And it was interesting because one year I did enter and I, I, I bought some critiques and they said, oh, this image, it was a jack in the pulpit. This would be great if you, you just change this. Well, I did that and it didn't go anywhere the next year. And you have to be willing to accept that. It's yeah. a different judge. So I think it's, it, it's helpful to release your ego and not, not be connected to winning or losing, but doing your very best. Because if you, you know, move from the local competitions into the international competitions that are, that are you know, where, where you, you look at the images that are, are winning, and if you think that they are leaps and bounds um, ahead of either where you are or where the general public may be, then that gives you something to stretch for. And you, you just don't know, but it's, there's some competitions that are you know, viewed as giving you some legitimacy maybe. Okay. So, so if you, if you want to win and you want to be able to say, you know, I, I got this. Yeah, and my, my photographs are on loan with the PPA is a big deal to say, right? Right, exactly. Right, right. That so, means, well, you must be pretty doggone good. <laughs> <laughs> and so when you start to do that consistently, then you know, you know, or if I'm teaching workshops, I want to be able to say, hey, I've been recognized by somebody besides myself. But at the end of the day, I am shooting for myself. I want to have images that, that I'm very proud of. And it's through some of these types of competitions that, that I push myself. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you my take on this. Because, okay. you know, I judge a lot of competitions, but I also teach a lot of beginner photographers. And what I have seen in many photographers is that they think they're way better than they are. I mean, they really don't know anything about the uh, compositional rules. Yes, you can break them, but it has to make sense why you broke them. <laughs> and they don't know them. Well, so you look at the picture and it's jarring because the judges all know the rules. We all know what those composition rules are. You don't see it because you're attached to your picture and you've got a little too much ego going on. You think you're better than you are. And it's not that it's going to, I mean, it will humble you, but the whole thing is it'll make you understand that you can never stop learning and improving, that you're not that great. Nobody is. Nobody <laughs> is. You know, I mean, if you took the most, I don't know who the most famous photographer in the world is, but the most, let's say the most successful photographer, his stuff might not even win in competitions because that's a different skill. Well, that, and that's very true. And so I always like to kind of ask people, well, how do you measure success? And I think it's in terms of your own happiness. How, yeah. re how rewarding is it for you to, to shoot, to edit, to look at your final images? Is it measured in dollars and cents? Because is it measured in winning competitions? I think that it's it's got to come from within. Why do you shoot? Do you shoot because you enjoy the being out in nature? Do you shoot because you enjoy people and you love doing weddings? You know, so I I think it's important to first ask ourselves why we shoot yeah. and how we shoot. Do we like being with a group? Do we like going out on a, on a hike with twenty other people? Going to the garden with a friend or twenty people, or do you like just the solitude of it? Do you like the process of, of this shooting? Or are you okay with post-processing? And do you like to dwell in the, in the editing, in, mm -hmm. in the Photoshop or Topaz or whatever you use? Um, I, I like it all. I do. I'm happy shooting with people. I'm happy shooting individually. But at the end of the day, I'm shooting for myself. Yeah. The images that I want to walk away with, I want to be really happy about. And I think I've also judged competitions and I've organized competitions and it's kind of interesting to be behind the scenes 
I did one competition which I organized, and so I intentionally didn't get involved in the judging. Right. I had three judges, sense. I and I had friends that entered, so it would have been very awkward for me to to be involved in that. So we we. Um, set it up, I selected three judges, one who was a photographer, uh, one who was a naturalist, and another one who is who was putting workshops together, uh, a tour leader. And But they all had some connection to photography, some more so than others, obviously. Mm -hmm. So we split the categories up, and the images were all, they were all uh, prints. They came in as digital, in digital files, and then we did our first call of the digital files, and then the finals came in as prints. So each of the seven categories went into different rooms. They were hung up and displayed with no names. Each judge had a post-it note, a pad of post-it notes, and they had to put one, two, and three on their first, second, and third choice. Mm -hmm. And I stood there, it was very interesting. There was no no conversation until after they made their choices in each room, one at a time. Okay. And what I observed was that they all pretty much agreed with each other, except for one room. There was one room where there, there was a little bit of a debate of the first, second, and third, and they, they kind of discussed it, talked it through, and then settled amongst themselves on the first, second, and third. But in six of the seven categories, there was pretty much a concurrence on the first, second, and third, and I love that. It was a, it, that to me was a, a successful judging. Right. And on the other hand, I've been behind the scenes in another competition that I organized where I saw some images that I thought were fabulous mm -hmm. and others that I thought were um, okay, and I watched as one judge who did not have a photographic background convinced another judge that one was better than another. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, no, don't move that. That's really a great image, and I know that that took skill. Yeah. But you know what? That's the way it goes, and I couldn't do anything to influence the results. So I know it. I've seen it from behind the scenes, and so you have to know that when you're entering. You just have to detach from the final results and say, if you're proud of it, that's good. Well, let's let's talk specifically about flower photography because I'm assuming that you have entered some flowers in competitions. What 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 types of flowers, just in your own experience, have won? What kind of pic photographs have won? Oh, it's <laughs> it's surprising. Some of the images that have won have been technically perfect, uh, very simple. Elegant, like light, a whole light painted. Or a close up or? Most of them are portraits. Okay. Some and of so them. Th when you say a portrait of a flower, you mean the whole flower, right? So, like a tulip, for example, that was the first one that I, I, I got some recognition for. It was a, a purple tulip where you could just see a graceful arc of the stem, and I call it um, Drama Queen. Oh, okay. Okay, it was light painted, it was against black. And then I, the, the other extreme was some uh, images that were made with lens babies. And Some, they're usually close-ups with lens babies? Well, in my world, they are. Okay. They were, they're very funky and very little in focus, very interesting, and so it's very unconventional. Okay. And there's a perception that they won't score well, and yet I've had very good luck with them. Okay. But you have to know which competitions are going to be more amenable to that sort of thing. Uh, Nampa. So looking at the other pictures from the past yes. contests really help. V very much so. Okay. Yes. Okay. And you talked about breaking rules and rules, and, and it's funny because I just did an idea book. It's uh -huh. not a big book. It's that's why I call it an idea book. It's it's an electronic uh, PDF, and it's called Break the Rules Like a Pro because I am a firm believer in what yeah. you said. You have to know the rules before you can break them. Yeah, that was, who said that? Picasso? Picasso, is he the one who said that? He might have been. Learn the rules, and I don't know. I, it made it our composition class. Joe's, Joe's taking credit, <laughs> but I think it was Picasso. Oh. <laughs> it was somebody, I, I, an artist who came before us. 
And what did you say you made? It's a little what? It's an idea book. It's a PDF. I, I did a class. Is it for you or is it for no, you? No, I, it, it, I sell them. They're sell 9 dollars Yes. Oh, okay. And so they're yes. on your website. Yes. What is your yes. website? It's loveblooms.com. www.luvblooms.com. Love okay. Blooms with a U. Okay, so this is called your idea book. Yeah, it's called Break the Rules Like a Pro. Ah. Yeah, okay. yeah. I did a uh, flower photography class, artistic macro floral photography for Scott Kelby last year. So it's on Kelby One. And then at Christmas, they gave away the idea book and their 12 days of Christmas. Okay. And so I thought, you know, that might be fun and different to do is how to break the rules like a pro. So we talked about, I, I gave some examples of how to break the rules when it comes to composition, lighting, um, focus. So um, can you, you give can, us some examples? Well, yeah, one of them, for example, let's take lighting, for example. Since as long as I can remember, I was told, make sure the sun's at your back. Make sure the sun's over your shoulder, right? Mm -hmm. And if that's the case, the sun is going to be shining on your face, right? So when I'm taking a photograph, I don't necessarily want the sun hitting my flower. Right, it's going to make it flat lighting, right? It, and, it, and it's harsh, you know, I, I don't want, I, you know, I want to diffuse things. And so sometimes making it more dramatic is more interesting. Putting it so, off to the side somewhere? Or? or how about shooting right into the sun? How ah. about shooting right so it's backlit? Okay. And maybe it's not, at, you know, a very, very bright, but when the sun's going down, um, or you, you use some artificial lighting. So do exactly what you've been told not to do, shoot into the light. Okay. 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 Composition. Can you put something right in the center? Why not? Well, there's some reasons that you may make a good case for putting something in the center. And let's take a, a flower, for example. If you have, um, okay, so here's some examples. Okay, remember that we have a bigger oh, audience podcast. that listens. <laughs> okay, let's say you have a vine and it's hanging down, a vine that's hanging down, straight vine with flowers like coming off like a spike off of that center vine. It's uh -huh. like a spine, okay, okay like a human. Uh -huh. And I would say that's okay to shoot vertically. Um, it's, it's straight up and down. You can put it in the center, maybe you move it over a little bit off center, but it doesn't have a gentle arc, like a, a flower that might cascade over and have an, a, an arch okay. on the stem. Uh -huh. So you have a flower like that, now you've got different leading lines. So your leading lines on something that's straight up and down, a straight tulip is going to be, it'll look a little bit awkward if you try to do what you would do with a tulip where the stem starts to bow over. So I think you have to know your flowers and then position them accordingly. So if you're gonna put something in the center or down the center line, look at what your subject is and how does it, how does it work with the flow? And what's what's what else is an image? Mm -hmm. So that's composition. Um, let's see. Then lighting, focus. We talked a little bit about focus. The old the old school, old style is get everything in focus. F sixteen, right? Mm -hmm. Well, what if it's not? What if you use selective focus and you get a beautiful bokeh in the background and just the, fo the center, let's say you have a flower and you're gonna focus just simply on the center and you have a wide aperture. So now most everything is soft. What if nothing is in focus? What if you have an abstract? What mm. about intentional camera movement? And mm. that's becoming a big thing. Yeah, that is, so now, I love that. <laughs> isn't it great? It's not easy. No. It looks easy, but it's not. Mm -hmm. So now nothing's in focus. So those are some examples. Okay, that's, that's fascinating. Do you think if you're trying something a little out of the box and breaking the rules intentionally, that you have a better chance of winning at a competition? Now it's gonna depend on the competition. So I would say if you're going to enter uh, I, that's, a, that's a hard question. I, I think that's a tough one. I think, here's my answer. What yeah, I think the what answer, do you think? What I think the answer is, it depends on yeah. the impact of the picture. 
because you know I and I don't remember all the rules you know the rules different guidelines or criteria that yeah like the PPA the Professional Photographers of America I think they have 12 guys they used to have 11 but I think they have 12 uh, you're right now. it's 12 now uh -huh. what was the, the 12th one it's is something. it impact I don't know no that's been in there for a long time I forget what the 12th one is now but but impact is almost always right up there at the okay. top on yeah. any competition you enter because if it's, and this is why, why your sunset picture doesn't win, it could be the most beautiful sunset in the world, but we've seen too many sunsets. Flower photography is gonna be a little harder, I would think, to win because there are so many, well, I guess there are so many photographers in every category, but how many different ways can you take a picture of a flower? Oh, yeah, yeah, uh-huh. You've gotta come up with some yes, way. Yes, absolutely. Of jarring the judge's mind a little bit to say whoa that's different that's unique right there's got to be some high impact you know one of the um i guess it's a competition i only see these pictures on facebook but they have like the nature comedy awards for photography or something oh, yeah, like that yeah. uh -huh. and they have got the funniest pictures of squirrels and bugs and expressions on these animals and oh my gosh <laughs> it is so fun because it's like here's another picture of a bird you know but what if you have a picture of a bird actually Denise Kofkoff who's one of our cust a regular customers on and friend at this point but she has the funniest picture of a bird it's some kind of heron but it was like about to bite her lens oh my gosh and it's feathers are oh. all ruffled and it is the oh she should enter that competition with that bird picture because <laughs> it is the funniest picture yeah those are the things that make you stop in your tracks when you like high impact think about your scrolling through facebook or instagram and one image will make you stop what is it about that image what so what, what can you do with flowers oh that's that's what I do is I know I, that's my, what you do. I, you're I, extremely creative. Well, I try to be, and that's why I, I I try hard. That's my goal is to try to make them look different. Try to bring out the personality, the character of the flower. And how can you do it? You can alter the lighting. You can change your approach, the angle. You can add textures. You can give it a sense of place with textures. And if, if you're entering a competition, I always like to use textures from that same location. So here at F3C this weekend, I did a field session out at the Naples Botanical Garden. We shot some orchids in the garden and then we overlaid them here back in the classroom in the editing session with textures that we shot in the orchid garden. So we did, we did orchid pictures for today. I did a multiple of nine. Um, in editing so we, we we did we shot a multiple of nine of an orchid in the garden we shot a blur a beautiful color blur in the garden and then we shot the coral slabs on the ground and then we merged them all today in the demo that i did in ah, in the post processing okay so that's how i that's how i make them look different and that's how i suggest one way i suggest people consider making their, their floral images stand out and have character, have That's a sense a of place. Idea. And, and I, what I'm thinking from what you just said was, you know, especially for people, like for us, I live in Florida, right? It, it, as do you, but I live in South Florida, it's really hot. And we're the opposite of the rest of the world. Well, that's when we <laughs> stay in the house. Right, exactly. <laughs> So you could just sit there with a couple of flowers, change out the backgrounds, change out the, the you know, the angle, change the lighting, change the close, the lenses, macro lenses. Absolutely, yeah. Lens babies. I mean, you could sit there with one flower and work in that thing for like an hour and a half, then pull it into Photoshop or whatever you use for, for editing and spend two hours editing it in different ways. You can, you that can. That would be a great assignment, wouldn't it? It would be. You should do that with your flower uh -huh. classes. I'm telling you what to do. <laughs> uh, and the Omni, the Omni, the kit that I was describing by Lens Baby, is another way to change things up. Same lens, same flower, you and now you've got infinite. Motion and Absolutely, yes, you, you can know, use motion. When I learned how to do zoom blur, I, uh -huh. I thought it was the coolest thing That's ever, fun. right? Uh -huh. And we always did it on fluorescent, or not fluorescent lights, what do you call those lights? Neon lights? Neon lights, yeah. So I'm doing that, and I had an intern. I have 
often have a high school intern, right? So I had this intern, and she did it on a flower. And it looked really, really cool. And I was like, that was a good idea. You yes, know, I mean, just yes. Zumbler on a flower came out really cool. They work very well on things like the Gerber daisies, where you have a center, because you're gonna zoom in or out from the center, and it will be always in the center of your image when you zoom. So things with a face, with a defined center. And if do you don't really know how to well. zoom blur, I'm going to tell you the best I can. But we, if you just do, go to understandphotography.com and just do, in the search, you know, I get search, I have two search parts on my uh, website. Just search zoom blur and you'll find it. I think, I think Joe wrote that article. Did you write that article, Joe? Like we don't remember. <laughs> but anyway, it just simplifies it. You know, that's our lot of motto. We simplify the technical. But usually I start, and let me see if you do it differently. But you might not do it as much as I do. <laughs> I used to. When, I, there was a time when I, when I discovered it. <laughs> when you discover it, you, have, you, you can't stop. <laughs> but I usually start at a fifteenth of a second. And then I meter to get my meter to zero on whatever I'm taking. Let's say I'm going to do a flower. So I'm going to get my ISO and my aperture at whatever. It doesn't really matter what your aperture is, if it's, if it's shallow or, or, you know, if your aperture is at 2.8 or 16, it doesn't really matter because you're going, to be zoom, you're going to be blurring it out anyway. And then you take the picture, you, just, you actually twist your lens as you're hitting the shutter button, and that's zoom blur. Now it takes practice, right? Well, you know, I'm not. I'm, That's not how you do it. No, I'm not sure we're doing the same thing. Okay, what are you doing? I wonder if we. What are. the heck are you well, doing? Well, maybe we are. I don't know. I, are you using a zoom lens? Yes. Okay. You have to have a zoom lens. Yes, then we are. So yes. So you're. So you zooming, have to have a zoom lens. You're twisting yep. the lens. Yes. As you're hitting the shutter. Yes. I yes. S I usually start at a fifteenth of a second, and then sometimes I go slower as I, you know, if I'm not getting yeah, blur yeah, or, or whatever like that. So. Yeah, it's, that's how you do it. It's fun. Mm -hmm. You can do a horizontal blur, or vertical, all kinds of cool blurring. And I don't know, you know, maybe with tulips, with the long stems, doing a vertical blur might be cool. Because what you described too is if somebody, um, give me an idea, if you don't have a zoom lens and you've only got your macro, what if you just did a rotation instead of a zoom, I instead of a zoom? Hey, it's worth a try. <laughs> If you it's, force yourself to sit there for like, I'm not going to, I'm going to take a picture of this one flower for one full hour, you're oh, going to come up with some creative ideas. I've done that in a hotel room before. In you're fact, it was part of my talk yesterday. Yes, I showed examples of what I did. I, had, I gave myself a couple of hours. So I didn't time myself. I just said, all right, between now and when I go to bed, I want to see how many different looks I can get with this arrangement here with a whiteboard and a little ball. And it was so much fun. What, what do you mean, a little ball? It was a little blue glass ball. Oh, okay. That was my prop. Oh, that, that was, was the prop. And it's in, and I had that and a scarf. The scarf is in one image. The ball is, I think, in two images. And then the other five or six images are just flowers. Okay. And different colors, different looks. Only one is post-processed in Photoshop. But they all look totally different, and that was that was my self assignment one night. It would be a great assignment. I mean, it was that so much really fun. Really help you with your creativity, and if you want to win competitions, you have to have something with high impact, no matter what. Yes, I think I, there's something that I want to learn. There's a technique that I want to learn, and well, there's a, quite a few techniques I would like to learn. They may or may not be macro, but they are floral. They can be applied to floral photography. Um, I just haven't had the time to do it, and there well, are you, you run yourself too hard. <laughs> <laughs> but I do, I do, I do have goals, and I'm looking forward to you know sort of the quiet time when I can kind of um, just step back and look at things a new way. Yeah, yeah, that would be a good assignment. Now, what about um, what would be the difference between just um, getting critiques as opposed to actually entering a competition? Well, I think, I, I, well, it depends on what you're going for. If you want to win, you're not going to, obviously, then you're not going to want to just get a critique. If you're interested in an in image review, that's something that I find very, very helpful. Um, just make sure that 
the individual that is doing the review is knowledgeable and willing to uh, communicate effectively. Yeah, and, and you might get your feelings hurt, but... Uh, you might. I, you know, I can't say that I walk away ecstatic when I don't place. There have been many competitions I've entered, and I've, I've not gotten shortlisted at all, and that's okay. I'm okay with that. Yeah, but you can't just, because I, I know some people, they just think, well, it's just the judges, they don't, they don't understand me. You can say that to a point, but you should always look at your work critically. And I, I mean, every so. time I look at a picture that I took, even the ones of my favorites, you know, I can start picking at them. I can start seeing Oh, the I problems, can too, you're you right. Know? Uh -huh. And the worst thing is, if you want, if you, when you start teaching, as you do, and you're te teaching composition, and there's a picture hanging on the wall that's got all kinds <laughs> of compositional problems to it, you know, and you, I just have to, I dress it. I'm like, yes, you see that? Yes, the horizon should not have been through his head. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> and I explain what happened, because there's always a reason that you did something wrong, usually. So. Oh, I do things wrong all the time, and sometimes it's not on purpose. If you're out shooting flowers and it's windy, as it was the other day, you focus on a flower, and by the time their shutter is released, the flower's half out of your frame. And, oh, it's too late. You just, but in a second, the flower's going to be back where it was, and you've got your shot. Well, when you go into your Lightroom catalog, you, you've got all those oops, blunders. I save some of those because I teach and I like to show people. I, I, I give them two stars and I tell people, if you find an image with two stars, it's a bad image, it stinks. But I'm saving it so I can show you what not to do. Yeah, I, experimentation is the key to improving. Practice, experiment, do things that take you beyond where it's good so that you can come back and say, okay, this is where I need to be. I think um, if you can pay somebody to critique your work, especially if you're serious about competing, I think it's a really good idea. But I, I agree, you have to find the right person and somebody qualified. And I think the PSA does free critiquing mm -hmm. and they're qualified. Joe is a PSA judge, the Photographic Society of America. And they're highly qualified judges, actually. You have to go through testing and all this other stuff. Um, but if you belong, a lot of camera clubs are automatically belong. You know, you automatically belong yes. to the PSA if you belong to certain camera clubs. Not, not ours in, in Naples, but in Fort Myers Camera Club, they do. They automatically belong. belong. And you can submit for free, critique, free critiquing. I can't talk. So all of the members, by virtue of the club membership, all of the members have access to that benefit? They're a PSA member. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Well, I just recorded a video, a webinar for PSA on flower photography. Ah. So, yeah. yeah. PSA is a really, really good organization. Lots of, lots of, lots of education. And, yes. And people don't take advantage of things, I think, that they should. You know, the PPA, I've been, I've belonged to the PPA since I started. And, uh, Oh, that sounds like a good webinar, but I, then I don't do it, you know, or whatever. Yeah, there's so many resources out there, it's hard to take advantage of all of yeah, them. Yeah, it really yeah, is. Yeah, it really is. There's not enough time in the day. <laughs> so what's coming up for you? Well, I know my summer includes NACCC in July in Amherst. That's going to be, this is going to be after that. I okay. Believe. I think that's the first weekend, isn't it's it? It's July 17th to the, the 19th. Middle. Yeah, this is the 20-something, end of July. Okay, end of July. So let's start with August. I can, can say, okay. So in August, I'm going to be in Chicago for the Out of Chicago Floral Photography Conference. It's the botanic conference that Out of Chicago puts on every year. Last year we were in Longwood, and this year they'll be at the Chicago Botanic Garden. And after that, I'm going to go straight to Oregon for a workshop in Bandon on the Oregon coast with. Uh, another instructor who's local named Susan Dimmick, who's a fabulous seascape photographer, amongst other things. And then uh, Padma Ingeva is going to join me at Swan Island, where we're going to do dahlias. And then we'll head over to Portland and do the Rose Garden and some other gardens in the general area. So that's September. 
and then in October I'll be in Spartanburg, South Carolina with Mike Motes for his macro conference. And then that, that brings me up to fall and winter, at which time I'm going to hunker down and work on some of my own projects. Wow, and that, tell us your website again. My website is www.loveblooms.com with a U. L U V. <laughs> because somebody else had L O V E. So it's kind of it's kind of catchy. Yeah. Um, although it, it, yeah, I have a Jackie Kramer Photography .com website, but that's what I started when I was doing more weddings and the flowers, the weddings, the birds. Sacred St. Augustine, a project I did with the churches and synagogues in St. Augustine is, is all, yeah, so I split them up and I have a sacredstaugustine.com website. Jackie Kramer Photography is now for the weddings and portraits and Love Blooms is for all my floral stuff. Okay, okay, I oh, kind of did the same thing. I'm very excited okay. also because I just got back not too long ago from Costa Rica mm -hmm. and that's on the horizon. Again, I'm going to be going back with a group through Holbrook Travel next year in 2021, March of 2021. So I wanna just put a shout Costa out for that. Rica. It's amazing. Flowers, like I, I could not believe, I was, it exceeded my expectations. Birds, lizards, there's sloths, all kinds of birds, sloths, <laughs> waterfalls, delicious food and wonderful people. Yeah, oh, the people are amazing in Costa Rica. They really awesome. were. So that's 2021. Yes. But all on love. Say love again. blooms. Love blooms. Love blooms. Love dot com. Blooms dot com. Love <laughs> you make blooms. it sound so romantic. It's so cute. It's, uh, <laughs> oh, Jackie Kramer, thank you for being on the Understand Photography Show again. Thank you, Peggy. Thank, thank you. you for hosting me and doing this. It's a great service for photographers. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And to our audience, remember to check out the show notes at understandphotography.com. And we'll have actually one of the things that Jackie said that I want to put in the show notes. Um, and when I say I want to do it, I'm telling, I'm saying, Heather, will you do this? Anyway, um, is she actually listed some different competitions, especially if you're a flower photographer, you want to check out these different competitions. So we will put links to these competitions in the show notes. We're also going to link to Jackie's Facebook group. Florography. Florography, with a PH, and of course her website, and have some samples of her work on our website, but of course you can also check Jackie's work out and on Love Blooms. And com. the Zoom Blur article. Oh yeah, and the Zoom Blur article. <laughs> too. There's going to be all kinds of stuff. In yeah, this. <laughs> yeah, this, and uh, even you can link for PSA members to the PSA webinar. Is that possible? And we can link to the PSA webinar that Jackie's going to be putting on. If you're a PSA member, you can watch that as well. I'm Peggy Farron. Thank you so much for joining us on the Understand Photography Show. We will see you next week. Get up.